Hello and welcome back to the second portion of the program for the Filecoin Crypto Economics Day here at DevConnect in sunny Amsterdam. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Patrick Woodhead. Patrick is the technical program manager for the Retrieval Markets Initiative, which will of course be crucial to the further expansion of the Filecoin ecosystem. And he's going to talk to us today about, you guessed it, Retrieval Markets. Take it away, Patrick. Thank you very much, Carola. Right, yeah, today we'll be talking about retrieval markets. Um, and as, as it's Crypto Econ Day, we'll have a particular focus on the crypto economics of the retrieval market as well. Going to begin with some motivation. So, um, a, a statistic. By 2025, the global CDN market, that's content delivery network market, is expected to be twice as large as the cloud object storage market. So cloud object storage, think AWS S3, CDN, you're thinking CloudFront, Cloudflare, Akamai. Now, when you first think about this, you might think, oh, that's actually remarkable. Um, you, you store files in a classic traditional cloud, and then you kind of accelerate them as like an extra benefit. So why would it be such a, a bigger market? But actually, when you think about it some more, you realize the engineering involved and the, the hardware, the, the kind of points of presence around the world that are needed to create a great experience for everyone retrieving files to all of their browsers, their games, consoles, etc. Uh, and they expect an amazing experience. They expect web pages to load instantly. Uh, that's, that's a big engineering challenge. And because of that, companies are happy to pay uh, a, a large amount to create such a good experience. So what I'm trying to say here really is that retrieval, uh, forget about storage. We've been talking about storage all day. Let's talk about retrieval for a bit because it's pretty important. Okay, so what is a retrieval market? It's the name of the talk and the name of this team, um, but let's, it's good just to try and get a definition sorted here. Um, so for me, a retrieval market is a setting where anyone can come along and they can provide retrievals, file retrievals to those who are demanding those files. So I'd say that those traditional uh, cloud CDNs like Cloudflare, uh, CloudFront, Akamai, they're, they're working in, in a retrieval market. But we're looking here at decentralized CDNs, and in particular, the Filecoin retrieval market. So Filecoin retrieval market, we want to enable a decentralized CDN or DCDN to, to emerge around the Filecoin network so that we can have performant, reliable, economic retrievals from, of Filecoin data. So there's lots of different topics that contribute to creating a healthy and vibrant retrieval market. Um, and in the interest of time, I might not go through all of these particular building blocks right now, but we're going to focus instead on crypto economics. OK, so this diagram here uh, is my attempt to draw up what's happening in what I call the primary retrieval market of Filecoin. Uh, so on the right-hand side in green, we've got the storage provider who's storing some content. And when a retrieval client over in blue on the left wants to retrieve a file from the storage provider, uh, they have to do a few things. It's not as simple as just a browser making uh, an HTTP request for, for a file. They have to set up a payment channel on the Filecoin ledger. Uh, and then they have to do what is called this optimistic fair exchange protocol, uh, whereby the retrieval client will send, say, one voucher in exchange for one byte of the file, and then two vouchers in exchange for two bytes, because these two entities, they don't trust each other, and they have to build up this trusted relationship. Um, and eventually, the retrieval client will send some vouchers over and will retrieve the last bytes of the file. The reason this is optimistic is because there's no sort of dispute mechanism. If the retrieval client doesn't get some bytes back for the vouchers it sent, it can't go and complain to anyone. It's just lost out on those vouchers, and that's why we build up trust. Um, and eventually, the storage provider can redeem these vouchers that it's retrieved from the, or got from the retrieval client um, on, the, on the network. Uh, so the reason that we have to have this off-chain, well, when you set up a payment channel and then using vouchers instead of Filecoin, is because we have to have, have, to have them really quickly. Uh, we don't want to have to have a blockchain transaction every time we want to re re uh, retrieve a few bytes. And that's why this whole mechanism is in place. But it does mean that this retrieval client, there's lots of barriers to entry to being a retrieval client. You need to be able to talk to the Filecoin ledger, and you also need to be able to speak graph sync and do this exchange protocol. 
um, which means that the majority of clients around the world who want to retrieve files are sort of counted out from this. Uh, for a browser to do this, it's uh, pretty difficult. So uh, yeah, essentially we can't, the demand for all of these files is, is very difficult for that to match that to the supply in the storage providers. What's more, these storage providers are not really equipped to satisfy all this demand. They can take, uh, you know, the odd retrieval, but they, they're not like a CDN where they can take kind of, you know, millions of requests a day. So this was how this primary retrieval market. This is how Filecoin launched, and what we're starting to see emerge now um, is what I've tried to capture in this diagram. Um, so we'll start down in the bottom left. We have these content publishers. So you can think of, say, an NFT marketplace uh, being a content publisher. And they want to accelerate their files and create a great experience for someone who's looking at NFT media, whether videos, images, etc. Now, they could go straight to the storage providers in green and create lots of deals to store that data. Um, but what we're seeing happen is they actually speak to a deal, what I've called a deal and distribution service. And we can think of S3 as, as, as such an example. So they give the data they want to store to this deal and distribution service. And then this deal and distribution service can create deals with storage providers to store that data on Filecoin. And in the case of S3, I believe it's uh, six replicas or with st six different storage providers. But then what we get is, uh, and what S3 offer is IPFS retrieval. So it's saying, okay, you can store it on Filecoin and then we'll make it available through an IPFS gateway, uh, which is great. You've now got a retrieval story which is uh, available to browsers and other usual devices that, that we use to, to fetch files. Um, however, I think from a crypto economic perspective and also a decentralization perspective, there's just a few things that are not that we want to kind of improve in this diagram. So it'd be nice to see sort of a link between the storage side and the retrieval side. Um, it feels like you're kind of putting something in the storage, uh, into Filecoin storage, and it doesn't then speak to the retrieval part of, of the architecture. Um, in terms of value flow, the content publishers are, will be paying to store stuff with Filecoin as part of a deal. The storage providers can earn block rewards for their storage. But in terms of, of this model here, the IPFS is sort of run by whoever wants to run IPFS nodes or whoever's paying the bill for running an IPFS gateway. So that takes us on into the secondary retrieval market. So when I say secondary retrieval market, uh, the primary one is, is retrieving from the storage providers and the secondary one is where we can cache stuff outside of the storage providers and we can start to retrieve between what we're going to call retrieval providers in blue. And um, the reason we've got a ring of them around the storage providers is just alluding to, to Saturn, which is going to be introduced later on uh, and the rings of Saturn. So it wasn't, I just got a bit carried away with a uh, copy and paste. So yeah, we've got some of the we've got some of the boxes from the previous slide. We've got the content publishers again, who are, who are going to be giving content to the deal and distribution service, and they're going to be creating deals with the storage providers. But also, we can now connect the retrieval providers to the storage providers, um, and we can then enable some value flow between those two entities. And also, the deal and distribution service, rather than just making it accessible to the IPFS gateway, which they could also do, they can start to con uh, con can, yeah, contact these retrieval providers and start to create the retrieval flow through these more decentralized offerings. Um, so yeah, this suddenly me this means that we've got we can have retrieval providers spun up by anyone, which is a requirement of this secondary retrieval market to be completely decentralized. Um, the only I guess the only requirement that we're adding back onto our clients is that they really need to verify what files are going to get back. Um, if it's an IPFS gateway, you're sort of trusting that gateway to give you the right file. But if anyone can spin up a retrieval provider, uh, then how can you trust they're going to give you back the right file? I might ask for a huge video and get returned like a tiny image, and that's not great. So th there needs to be some way that I can I can kind of prove that the, the file that I've retrieved is right. And, and there we reach for content addressing, um, which is the answer for lots of things um, in the Filecoin network. And we can then verify that file. But browsers don't verify content address files very easily, so we have to add some extra mechanisms, perhaps in a browser, or whatever the client is, we're going to have to add that level of, of verification. And we can also then start to try and work on the properties which current cloud CDNs offer, such as traffic spikes and uh, 
DDoS attacks, that sort of thing, and protect the storage providers uh, from those internet um, scale phenomenons. And yeah, just much lower hardware cost to contribute to the Filecoin network. That's really important because we want it to be permissionless and decentralized, but if you have to own a data center to get involved, then it's not particularly decentralized. So we want to allow anyone to join who, who's just got some, some devices um, or spare devices which they could contribute to the network. So then we get to the question of how should a retrieval provider earn? Um, we've got storage providers who can earn block rewards uh, by doing proofs of storage, and they can also earn a small amount doing deals with people make, who want to store data. Uh, what's, what I should mention here as well, though, is that the deals to store data can actually be negatively priced, um, which is a phenomenon only available in, in Web3, um, because the storage providers, they, they're so keen to get this Filecoin Plus subsidies that they just want to take valuable verified data. So they might even pay the deal and distribution service to say, give me good, get good data. And perhaps that could then be used uh, to pay for some of the retrieval providing. In general, though, we want to find a way that these retrieval providers can earn without, um, well, by linking it to the demand. Because if we just, let, let's say, w one of the ideas we've looked at for how retrieval providers can earn is proving bandwidth. So you're just proving that you're online and, and you're up, and you can re receive some sort of block rewards for proofs of bandwidth. But that doesn't, again, link retrieval providers to demand, to the number of retrievals that they're serving. Um, and so we might end in a situation where people are optimizing to win these block rewards, again, for retrieval providing, but it's not linked to actually network demand. And so one of the questions that we're talking about a lot at the moment is whether your rewards as a, as a retrieval provider, how, how dependent they should be on exactly how many retrievals you're serving, because that's what we want to really promote in this network, uh, is for them to serve as many retrievals as possible. And if we go back again to, to this diagram, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the IPFS gateway run by Protocol Labs uh, receives something like a billion requests a week or something in that order of magnitude. So there is demand for these content address files. Um, so then if, we, if we're doing it on how many retrievals a provider has served, um, at a network level, that's kind of makes sense. We can try and gather a, a list of retrievals made and then uh, remunerate each retrieval provider based on that. But the issue then becomes that's sort of centralized again. So retrieval providers, should they be then paid for each individual retrieval in a sort of a localized way to keep things decentralized? But again, then we're putting uh, requirements onto the, the clients who are retrieving stuff from the retrieval providers to actually be able to pay for it uh, as a sort of pay-as-you-go um, approach. So there's lots of trade-offs that we're, there's lots of trade-offs that we're facing um, with these retrieval providers to try and link them up to the usual clients that people use, such as browsers, but also be able to uh, live in a completely decentralized context um, and earn rewards um, appropriate to what service they're providing. So yeah, we're seeing a bunch of different retrieval networks emerge in this retrieval market, um, which I've tried to crudely put on this Web 2 to Web 3 axis. Um, and that sort of involves all these trade-offs that we've been talking about. So on the one hand, we have uh, IPFS Gateway and the recently released NFT.Storage Gateway, which they sort of, they're, they're aiming to really compete with those Web2 offerings in terms of performance and reliability, but giving up on verification or content addressable nature of the data. And then moving across to the far right-hand side, the Web3 side, we have some more purists in this decentralized CDN space who are trying to reinvent uh, the way that we, that we retrieve data. Um, and one I want to talk about in particular is Saturn. We've actually got the team building Saturn here today um, who do a much better job than I would at introducing it. Um, so yeah, Filecoin Saturn is exactly that. It's a decentralized CDN for Filecoin. Um, at the moment, the the way that it's structured is we have gateway nodes and station nodes forming two rings of Saturn around the center of gravity of data uh, in the Filecoin network. The gateway nodes, they are uh, in order for, for browsers to be able to communicate with this retrieval network. And as such, they have to have a slightly more centralized touch where we're kind of certifying them um, such that browsers can talk to them and also requiring that they have 
a very high bandwidth and high availability requirements. But we've also got this notion of a station node. And a station node is, is going to be a desktop app so that anyone can download this app and start contributing to the network. Uh, and Saturn is currently testing in, uh, in V0. And yes, just to mention now on Tuesday, uh, we have a retrieval markets workshop, which is an introduction to Filecoin Saturn. So if anyone's interested in peer-to-peer -peer networking, um, some of the web, web uh, browser protocols like WebRTC, that sort of thing, some of the crypto economic ideas I talked about already, um, or, any, or just web, or web three CDNs in general, um, then I'll be sharing some links to this later, or just come find me um, and come get involved on Tuesday if you're still around. And I think I'm probably out of time. Okay, well, I just put this in just in case there was a bit of time. And a lot, of, a lot of time, a lot of our time in retrieval markets and with the Saturn team, we spend discussing these trade-offs and what the real benefits are of this Web3 CDN uh, compared to Web2 CDN. And I think for me, just to, if I were just to pick one thing out of the slide, I think what's really powerful, and it's something actually uh, which Tom mentioned in his talk earlier, it's about creating a more symmetric network rather than asymmetric network. Um, it means that rather than it being client server, I'm retrieving a file from, from Cloudflare, et cetera. Instead, I can retrieve a file from other peers in the network, and then I can even earn. I think that is an innovation which you don't get in the Web2 space, that users can retrieve and then earn for sharing that file with others in the network and act as a much more symmetric node um, in a distributed network. And I will stop there. Um, yeah, thanks. Any questions? Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. He started off by saying, forget about storage. Let's talk about retrieval. Echoing Eminem. Forget about Dre. <laughs> bold words from bold men. Questions to the bold man in front of you. Uh, does the uh, hierarchical consensus mechanism that's currently being researched at Protocol Labs uh, have anything to do with the Saturn pocket project, or is there any thought of like integrating the two, or maybe it's too early along to say? That's a great question, and I'd say that it hasn't, I'm just going to be honest, we haven't thought about it yet, I haven't been in touch with them, um, but it's, it's a great idea. What we have thought about is how we could use, once FVM launches, sort of layer two solutions um, to then, because there's been so many retrievals, it's like how do we how do we govern all of these retrievals? So like roll-ups, that sort of thing, enter the picture. So yeah, lots of ideas about how we can start to manage uh, the sheer number of retrievals we hope to serve. I noticed that you had on like the spectrum of Web2 to Web3, Myel or Miel network farthest right. Can you explain uh, why that is and whether it's desirable for Saturn to be further to the right than anything else? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I'd, I don't want to speak for the MyL guys, but I, but I think the reason I put them further along the access was the access is because um, they they feel that it should be each transaction should be paid for in that so it just be a local transaction between the client and um, yeah the person who's serving the retrieval um, and not be governed more centrally. And so if we want to transact, no one else is involved. We're just, I'll be paying you for a retrieval and you'll be giving me a file kind of similar to the primary retrieval market. Uh, but that puts a lot of constraints on what clients can, can operate because it makes it very difficult for browsers uh, in their current setup to, to be able to communicate like that. So in order for a browser to operate as it does now, you have to have a few concessions to more centralized approaches. Um, and I would say that the Saturn team, that's exactly what's happened, what, what's, what we've gone for. We've said, okay, we're just going to concede on these few things for now, and hopefully we're going to tweak it and make it more decentralized, more Web3 as, as we build. Um, but we've just got to use the browser as it is now and try not to change it because that could be quite hard. Excellent. Thanks again to Patrick. Uh, 